Okay, so um, thank you for coming to my presentation. So the, um, today I'm going to uh, show you what, what is my one of my projects. Uh, and this is nice because it's just a simple project that involves uh, different things such as uh, data wrangling, data visualization, modeling, um, doing a presentation uh, with Porto, and then uh, shining up. So all very basics, okay? So um, I start sharing um, my screen. I don't know exactly if I share today. Okay, so this is uh, um, my presentation. And let me see. Okay, so the my my project one of my first project is this one here, um, and started with um, uh, me practicing making a package, uh, and I did a data package. So the the the, the simplest thing ever, uh, but it involves a bit of like. Uh, understanding a few a few things, uh, and so uh, we mm, think that these data are very um, so appropriate for 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 spatial modeling as well. Uh, so I like to uh, build this project on learning about spatial modeling as well. Okay, um, myself, my name is Federica Gazzelloni, and you can find me by email, on Twitter, on GitHub, and I even made this nice uh, uh, blog with some visualization and things that I'm currently doing. So who am I? Uh, I am a statistician and a naturally, and uh, I, at the moment I work as an independent researcher. Um, usually, uh, you know, I, I like to explore new things. And for this reason, I enjoy to uh, searching for uh, hidden patterns um, around, especially uh, when they are uh, related with extreme events. Um, and I, I also, I'm also interested in improving my modeling techniques. Uh, and um, in order to do that, I started with uh, making a package, which is this one here, this Oregon Frost. Um, also, my, another project I'm working on is about health metrics and the spread of infectious diseases with machine learning application and spatial model analysis. But this is very an introduction, nothing else about health metrics and uh, the connection with infectious diseases. Okay, so my career, uh, I always like the, the, these things like the law of large numbers. And I did it at my uh, university. So, and it says it guarantees stable long term results for the average of some random events. So, you know, you, you point to something that it uh, would, should, should lead you to, to some security, some, some uh, certainties. But at the very beginning, it's always like a bit uh, below the average to then stabilize. So how I keep going, learning and practicing uh, with our ladies. Our ladies events are very good for learning and nurturing and very good for practicing as well. Our 4 ds community, uh, where I enjoy statistics, book clubs and everything, and then the HME. As I am a collaborator, I also review some papers, and uh, so it's a rewarding experience. So let, let's go finally into the project. So uh, this is my first package, Oregon Frogs. 
And it is a, a trip to special modeling we done. So, um, and it started like that I stumped into this set of data when I, I was doing visualization. And um, I really like it. Um, it it's rich on classifications and things. So the, ah, okay, yes, Lydia, the HME is the Institute for uh, Health Metrics and Evaluations with the University of Washington. It's, an, it's the Institute of Research uh, of the University of Washington. Okay, uh, so um, this, this data set contains information about uh, a frog, a type of a species of frog, which is Rana preciosa. And this is found in Oregon, uh, around the area of um, an artificial lake, the Cream Ferre uh, Reservoir, uh, and uh, where the frogs are stranded in their habitat and monitored with the radio telemetry. Um, the frequencies that are released from, from this radio telemetry identify the frog location and release information about where are the frogs, what they are doing, uh, and so this is a, comes from uh, um, a study from the uh, USGS, uh, and it is a very interesting study. So they are stating uh, the, the information about uh, Rana Preciosa. So to install the package, uh, it's still on GitHub, but I'm, I'm going to, uh, if, if things go well, so I'm going to try with CRAN. It's still a, a developed version, so you can install it on GitHub and, uh, and then follow the library. Let's see if it works. Okay. Um, here there are two nice, uh, just tell me if you can see them. Uh, this is the first uh, frog calling uh, while partially submerged in the water of a shallow pool. We could hear it a little, but it's not consistently coming through. Okay. And uh, while this other one is uh, the Rana Preciosa, as it was picked up across the back. It's a, it's a, it's a same. Yeah. No sound coming through for that. Uh, you, you haven't heard it? No. Oh, why um, is that? I, I think it's the way that you shared or, um, yeah, it might not work. Uh, uh, I don't know how to. Okay, the, the, uh, the sound comes from this amphibia web. So if you like to, to hear this, to, I'm, I'm going to uh, publish this, this uh, um, I'll publish this uh, presentation um, and then I'll post the link, but you can even have a look at this amphibiaweb.org for, for more frog sounds, uh, which is interesting. Okay, so uh, the, the package is, uh, th there are about 300 observations, 15 variables, and um, uh, what, uh, so basically there are information uh, about coordinates, longitude and latitude, uh, the detection status, if they are captured, visualized, not visualized, um, and again, other information about the habitat. Uh, and so, as you can see, uh, the type of water um, or the structure. So, this is the, the lake, the artificial lake. Uh, it is, um, uh, the, the, they are found around this area, mostly, uh, less likely to find it on the south. Uh, even if this, uh, uh, you know, this research is, um, has been carried in, on a specified uh, period of the year, so between September and November. Uh, but, you know, you, you can see that they are all together on a side and just if you on the other side, and why you cannot see any anyone on on yeah, so on the uh, west side. 
uh, something that which is very important is the uh, are the frequencies and the distribution of the frequencies. Uh, it's very important so to be so to go a bit more in depth about this because you can uh, see what uh, which frequencies are more frequent uh, for for uh, locating um, the frog. And uh, this is uh, then we we can talk about this presentation as well um, because I embedded this um, widget into a quarto presentation. Um, so the Oregon frog provides two functions, and one is long lat to UTM, and the other one is UTM to long lat. So basically, uh, the coordinates, as as we know. Um, so usually are the longitude and the latitude, but you can find some uh, um, other type of um, spatial, uh, spatial um, in, uh, information, uh, such as uh, the, the UTM, so Universal Transversal Marcator, um, which uh, are uh, basically meters. So when you find UTM, they are in meters, distances from the north, or from the east side uh, of a specified location. So it might be useful sometime to have a function, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the simple feature package, you can find it. Uh, and um, th there are a couple of functions that you can use and you can transform the UTM into long lat. So I've just brought this, uh, this syntax into a function. So you provide the function and specify uh, the coordinate reference system because we are divided within zone. So for example, in um, the, this zone 10 corresponds to the, the west side of the, the US, the, the, so the, the Oregon is in zone 10 and uh, you, you find it on the internet, uh, the different zones you can understand. Uh, while when you transform it in uh, longitude and latitude, the, the most um, frequent uh, um, reaction is this WS84, uh, which is the very center of the, the earth. So, and then all the other coordinates uh, go around. But, you can use even other, the other. So th this is the, like more going inside the the, the spatial um, data manipulation. But anyway, so within this, uh, with with this syntax, you then obtain a geometry which is uh, in coordinates, long, longitude and latitude. And um, if you use the geometry, it's very simple for you to you know like. Uh, make a polygon or these are points, uh, but it's it's faster than uh, other things. But then you can transform this back into simple coordinates, and this is the what uh, these two function does. What you can do with this data uh is make a nice visualization because uh, um as i um, as i said this is very nice uh, for classification analysis model analysis so they are all uh, like factor and characters elements to identify for example the habitat and the structure of the habitat and, and of the other things so it it's good for very good for classification, and then you can do like sort of uh, other type of different type of spatial modeling, and you can test, for example, with simple smooth. Uh, these are the frogs that we saw uh, in the lake, and uh, this are, is the the little uh, network of those ones which are uh, on the south. So you can see how it changes. Why it should be like basically going to uh, quite a straight line. So. Okay, uh, and then, uh, so when uh, my project is to, so 
basically add a navi to to my package in a way that there is a, a couple of uh, packages that allows you like gbif or something like that allows you to uh, download the data for the environment like the temperature uh, so different bios uh, predictors that you can use in your model to then obtain something like that so which is uh, this is the 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 oregon area it is not just the, the lake but this uh, um, green dots are where the frogs are most probably located. So this is what uh, uh, this packet should uh, have in the, the near future. Okay, what else? Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> this is uh, my vignette, and I had quite a bit of uh, like challenges because I've started adding things and, uh, uh, you know, th this introduction to Oregon Frog should be here, uh, where it was, but then it put everything inside this article sub, and uh, apparently it's still loading. I don't know uh, why. Uh, maybe because it's, it's Easter time. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you have any question. Then I like to show you my app and a bit of the background uh, of the presentation and the app. It looks cool so far. Um, I just like a passing interest in frogs just because like I feel like every kid does you run around and you're like I caught a frog <laughs> and then last night I was even out walking and there was a little frog on the sidewalk and I was like oh yeah I have project club tomorrow it's all about frogs so <laughs> it's pretty cool yeah it's that the the fact that interested me was that they um are able to okay there is a telemetry radio telemetry so they uh locate the animal the, the frog and then how this can influence they going around if this happen and where they uh how they influence them moving so that that's interesting but as well it's good for classification because there are lots of predictors which are all uh, like factors, influencing factors. So I share my screen again. Because I um, made a little app, very, very, very simple. Okay, and uh, okay, there's something in the chat in front. Um, in slide 11 was touch widget it um yeah yes they you can uh, i show you i show you uh it, it's a, you, you just uh, uh, add um, something to the presentation uh which contains uh, a shiny server and then you call the server so you can um, uh, deploy the widget. OK, um, this is the uh, very simple app uh, which I made um, and is still in development. So this is the title and if you click it nothing happened and if you click it here nothing happened because this is the um the, the main page but then you can add more tabs here uh, and this is what um i'm planning to do in the future then for example you have this 
uh, other tab with the about and there is something about the um, the data and who made the app. Okay, then you can go back from here. I no, you can. Okay, so um, what's happened in this app is this. This is um any uh, left uh, map which is done like that. So, but uh, I like to um add more things so in a way that i can change the points here which is something that i can do uh and uh, like a bit of like reframe it um uh, what i you can find here are the habitats so there is a pond the reservoir and the river so you can select uh, one of those things there and then if they are female or male, and where they found. So when you click uh, search, the uh, two type of models, so the, the lowest and smooth and the linear model, adapt to the few frogs that are in the, in the location. For example, if there's no water, you know, there is one here and one there. And the other one, the lowest is, is, has disappeared. So in the shallow water, uh, because uh, uh, you see that there's all, all female or male, because my uh, my study, so the, 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 the things that I wanted to, to understand a bit better is uh, what's happened. Uh, so if I can catch a male, more than a female is there any chance to be able to catch a male or or a female so basically this is the uh this is very 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 simple app but then i've been able to add the logo here which is not very so this should be like there must be another way to do it better because I had to guess the size and bit like do a trial error for, for the width and the age. And then I've, I had the, those these things here. I don't know if I can. I wanted to put something at the very bottom, like here at the center. Uh, maybe it's something that I do in the future. Uh, have you got any any question or otherwise we we go uh, into R to see to see the the, the app. I'm curious how long it took to do all this. It looks so cool and professional. Um, you know, you you learn uh, with time, and you keep your things on your. Uh, very back side of your mind and in the meantime you keep like thinking because the, the procedure of learning takes time so if you are try if you want to, to much if you ask too much to yourself you might um uh you know sometimes you 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 need to start the things and then leave it there because your mind keep going thinking about that and then all on a sudden you can do that like straight away. It's like when you learn how to go on a bicycle, on a bike. So it, it took some time, but uh, it is uh, maybe not. Uh, it's a very simple app. So um, maybe, uh, the, the obje my objective is to add the API and then be able to make the model within the app, but it actually takes a lot of long time to to run those things. So okay, so uh, let's let's have a look at the uh, uh, so first thing. This is the 
presentation. Yeah. Okay, so this is the presentation. I've used, uh, um, what is it? An extension, a couple of extensions. One is from our ladies, uh, because I had the, the presentation from our ladies, so I downloaded the extension. But then uh, I've made some uh, modifications to the um, CSS, like uh, changing the colors here and the size of the, the font size. And then here I put the logo for the, for, for the package. Uh, what else? So the other, the second extension, uh, this quarter extension, it's for the pointer, which I forgot completely to use. I suppose to, uh, I knew it that I would. Um, well, anyway, but it works uh, and it is nice. So you, uh, when you click uh, the queue, um, like a pointer, a big dot point appear. Uh, and um, it, it was green, but then I don't know what happened uh, then. It, I, I like to show you this thing. So it takes some time, I don't know, maybe something. No, I've asked too much. Okay, let's see if it works. Yeah, okay, can you see? Yes. So that, that was green because this color is green. I don't know how, how and why then became red. It's now red. Well, anyway, but then, then you click Q back again and it goes away. Okay. So what else? Okay, this is for adding the uh, the widget here. Oh, a couple of a couple of things. Even this this MP three files, uh, and this one. You see, this this looks like small, but then when you open up you know, on a browser, uh, it's the right size. I've tried to put two of them uh beside each other but um okay so you add this server shiny here and then um ah, maybe let me find it shiny Okay, shiny. Then uh, you load the libraries, um, and you. This is the UI because this is a little sh uh, shiny app. This, this is the UI, uh, and this is the server. In the server side, you need to add this context server, and then you can add. You, it, it basically loads the app, this little app. I've tried because um, you can see that uh, there is a chance for uh, doing um, things side by side with, uh, so I've tried to do this uh, with two, uh, two of them, but the, the, the plot didn't show up. So I gave up, but I'm sure there's a way to do that. Uh, one more thing. This is um, a. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Ah, okay. It's still faint, but yeah. Okay. So to add this, uh, yeah, 
uh, okay uh, when you want to make the like the, the title more so the the the, um, the text smaller not not the title you add this thing but then for for the audio uh this is the 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 sentence and then uh pull so it ends here I don't know why change the format of the thing uh so you can add this thing here because uh it's changed uh the the format okay so this is the file the mp3 file so you add this audio controls and uh, the audio uh, slash audio uh, this is just a sentence in case it doesn't work your browser doesn't support the audio element uh, what is between the audio controls and slash audio which is an hml uh, language is this source and then you add the mp3 file and then you specify this type of audio thank you so that was that was uh that was interesting as well i had a challenge even with this uh um uh, things but okay uh I don't know if you have any question, if you like to know anything else, otherwise I jump into the shiny app. Uh, I think the pointer color is not working due to a typo. Oh, okay. Where is the typo? Yeah, in fact, it was working. That was that was uh green but then something changes where is the title color instead of two color oh, okay yeah right yeah thank you okay great thank you <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I thought that that Q was for the mind that I had to use the Q uh, key for. Okay. So this is the shiny app. Uh, wait, I can run the app. No. In the, let's say if I do run the app in the visual editor, I can do that in the viewer frame. No, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, maybe I have to stop. In the viewer thing. Okay, so um, hmm. well, anyway, um, uh, we have a look at that um, in case we need it. So I've used this uh, libraries which uh, is not only shiny, but I have shiny CSS loaders and shiny themes, themes. Uh, also always load the tidyverse and I needed the leaflet for, for the map and the Oregon frog. So this is the first um, CSS changes, uh, change that I made. Uh, and that was for 
coloring uh, the um, bottom green as the point. Uh, uh, so, uh, and basically it's a um, CSS uh, call that named as a bottom color CSS uh, that I have put it here inside the tag style and as well as the background color that was green uh, orange and I put it here. So these are the two uh, changes that I made at the shiny theme uh, that was uh, provided. So I chosen this uh, darkly theme. Uh, and then I started with these two uh, CSS extra. So the, the app is this. There is a UI fluid page which ends somehow here. And there is a navigation bar with the, this is the title, uh, the things that was here. Um, and then you can add the theme in the navigation bar. Then you have the tab panel. So the, 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 the rectangle here, on the left side where you can uh, adjust for the um, scenario. And so there is a slide bar, sidebar, title panel, and select. So basically this first bit here, uh, it's, it's about like the, 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 it's part of the theme of the app. While from this bit, the select input, um, this bit here, and uh, these are the uh, second part here, are for are the engines, okay, for making the selection. So you basically select an input, and this is the habitat pin there. Uh, that was nice to have it here somehow. Well, let, let's see if I can reload everything and along the way. Okay. Shiny. Randy. Okay, there we go. Um, you know, uh, uh, change it, change it a bit. But I was uh, mentioning this bit. So this is the uh, select input. So you specify this function select input, uh, provide this. Uh, option input ID, you need to specify input ID. Then when you call it in the server, this is just an input. Okay, so this is the input ID and then uh, you can call it whatever you like. Just a reminder then in the server, you need to call it just as the same as you name it. And then uh, there is a label, select habitat, and then you have the choices. So basically uh, this is the data set and the app type, so I made unique. So I have the like the levels. And then this is selected, uh, the one that I want to appear. You can specify the width. Then even uh, a little help there. Then this HR are for leaving the, this line, um, hyper, uh, row, hyper row. Uh, and then there is a select 
scenario, scenario here for the, 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 the second part of this uh, sidebar panel. Okay, this is the sidebar panel. Um, and there's a fluid row. And then you can add radio buttons or uh, checks, checkbox group inputs. So this is a radio button and this is a checkbox. Just as the same as before, input ID and then the choices. Uh, basically, what challenged me a bit was here, the radio button, because I had the choice, a selected female, okay, and it didn't work. So it didn't work. So I had to get rid of it. And then it automatically selected the first one of the two. Then uh, this is the action button, search. Uh, and this is the one I've changed the color, button color. This background. I don't know. It's a bit difficult sometimes. Okay, this is the main panel. Where is the, uh, to use the least uh, flat uh, map, you need to call it. You cannot just use um, plot output. You need to call it least uh, flat output. And then you can even resize it um, somehow. Uh, then this is the second uh, the second plot that appears in the um, uh, in the main panel. This one here, uh, and this is with thinner because it works when you click the search. Uh, otherwise, you specify plot output. You name it, and then you find it. In the in this server, all the second part here is the about. Uh, in the navigation bar, there is a more uh, button on the very top, this one here, and the about. So this is the all the about, which is just a bit like as well. A bit challenging because you need to look at the size of the sentence and then adapt it. But and then when you did it, if you, you know, uh, you can reuse it uh, for another app. And then this is the logo, uh, tag image, which I put beside the my my name here at the very bottom. So this is all the UI. And then there is the server, which is the engine. So in the UI, you specify uh, basically what would you like from your app. And uh, in the server, uh, you actually work it out. So this is the engine of your app. So this is where all the calculations uh, are done. So it's as, it is as well a function. Uh, oh, I left it is as an infectious syndrome, but it doesn't matter because um, uh, I didn't change it because otherwise I was like scared to make errors. So. And you, uh, you can find it here. This is for the plot. Uh, because um, what's happened is that this way, what I do, it's a function. I am building a function. Okay, I can even change the name and say like, select uh, habitat, uh, the, the frog habitat. Uh, let's select habitat, 
And what's happened here is that I'm, I'm building up a function uh, with a, 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 this a reactive uh, thing because um, basically any time I make a, a selection, a set of scenario, uh, I filter my data uh, because it responded to a request for the habitat selection, the sex selection, the water selection, and then it filters the, the, the data uh, based on this input. Okay, what's happened is that, uh, as I said, then you have what is it? a function that will find a name. Uh, which is called inside the, the, the plot, from the plot. Um, this is not entirely correct because this isolate, should isolate the plot uh, to, uh, for, of any, for any changes uh, if you don't click the search button, but there is something that doesn't, work as I thought. So then uh, uh, the same uh, that you can do with the map. Uh, you can like uh, make a function uh, selecting the points and uh, changing the points in the map. Um, And so I think it is I left it. Um, this was in another. Uh, one question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't aware that one could isolate also a whole gplot object. Uh, but so my question is, uh, why did you need to isolate all the plot? instead of uh, maybe isolating the individual dependencies, well, reactive dependencies of that plot. What are the dependencies of the plot? For example, your reactive exploration in line 144, the select flow habitat. Um, I think that's the only one. So basically, you 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 use isolate, okay, to uh, isolate the plot to uh, uh, in a way that it doesn't. Um, so basically, it it changes only when you click when you give a, an input. Basically, if I make some changes, I'm not. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not happy with these changes. Um, you see, it, the plot doesn't change it. Okay, so I uh, isolated the plot while I make I'll, I'll setting um, my selections, my scenario selection. So so it doesn't change. Once I've made all my selection, then I click search, and it changes the. The, based on the scenario. Okay, if you don't isolate, if you don't isolate, anytime you, you click something, it changes. Okay, I see, thanks. Uh, yeah. And, um, so, uh, what else? so here that there's nothing else because it's very very simple and this is the map uh, this is the map the map doesn't do uh, is not connected to any input uh, it's a, it's a map which I just um, uh, if you run it, it works basically. 
because it's not connected to an input that is expected for you to uh, to provide. But this is something that can be changed. So basically here, when you I add the circle market, markets, if I uh, use a sort of a make a function as I did it before here uh, with a request input from any of these choices, I can like add or eliminate uh, the frogs from this map uh, because of this selection. In order to do that, I need to uh, set up a function, a selection function for the circle markets and uh, add here like in this, um, in this class, the input, which is connected to a function. And that's it. This is very, very simple app. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, all I've got. Very cool. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Federica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Federica. Right, and so I guess I will uh, check who are we doing? Or who's who's joining next week or next month rather? So next month, ah yes, I'm. <laughs> next month is Kevin uh, with the um, video upload automation for R for DS, uh, which we are actively working on. Um, and so I definitely look forward to seeing everyone there um, and participating in that one. Kevin will definitely be you know leading the drive, but I'll have a lot of information to go with that one. Um, yeah. So I guess with that, I will see everybody, well, next month and probably before next month in various book clubs. Bye. 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 Bye.